Call by the town clerk. Chairman Cogsall? Here. Councilor Chappell? Yeah. Councilor Jordan? Yeah. Councilor Linnell? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor McLaughlin? Here. And Councilor Reed? Here. I ask you all to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is citizens' discussion period of items not on the agenda. If you would come forward, please, and give us your name and address. And Good evening. My name is John Leisure. I live at 1243 Sawyer Road, and I have a little discussion on the Rod and Gun Club. Last summer, there was a town forum to discuss solutions to several issues at the Gun Club. And after much talk to date, none of these, these issues have been resolved. In fact, nothing has changed. Some neighbors and I have submitted a sound test report addressing one of these issues to inform the town and the residents of one of the risks to human health, which is this report. Uh, I hope the, the council has had time to read through this re these reports. Uh, with the public road so close to the shooting line and the high decibel levels, there is a substantial risk to health and public safety here. Also enclosed in our, pack in our package was the NRA manual for sound abatement and I question whether the club has any guidelines regarding sound abatement and safety such as those described in this manual. In closing, I would like the, the council to answer a couple of questions. The first one being, what does the town intend to do about the unhealthy sound levels at this, at this public road? And two, how does this club, as it exists now, fit into the town's comprehensive plan for this fast-growing residential neighborhood? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Michael, do you want to make a comment? Uh, Matt, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Leisure did provide copies to us about a week ago of those reports. Uh, they were provided uh, to the town council in a packet. Uh, the town council hasn't had any discussion yet as a group of them, and uh, you know perhaps the council would like to at some future date. Any other um, citizen discussion? If not, we'll move on to reports and correspondence. <laughs> Councilor McGinty. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to report back to the council and to the community regarding um, my attendance with two or with one other council member and the town manager at uh, the recent National League of Cities convention. Uh, it was in Washington, D.C. It was last Saturday through Tuesday. Um, Madam Chair uh, attended along with the town manager. Um, this gave us an opportunity to attend a number of seminars and training sessions, uh, to meet with other counselors and managers from across the country, uh, and to exchange ideas and information. Some of the seminars attended uh, were at the Telecommunications Act of 1996. Uh, this relates to cable TV, relates to the phone companies getting into cable TV, cable TV companies getting into the phone business. And uh, although it was very legalistic, um, and the, all the rules will not be written until August by the FCC. Um, there was a, a, a lot of information put out regarding the management of the towns right away and uh, assets that belong to the town uh, that may be affected by the Telecommunications Act. Um, we also attended uh, a seminar on block grants, public safety block grants to communities and how that may affect Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the town manager raised several issues in that uh, regarding uh, how block grants will be disseminated to communities of less than 50,000, which of course Cape Elizabeth is. Um, I attended a forum on tax reform, something that's uh, near and dear to my heart regarding taxes, um, and we discussed how municipal taxes may be uh, uh, impacted by uh, various tax plans that are being put forward by various candidates and coalitions, such as the flat tax. Uh, consumption tax, national sales tax, and these are all issues that are being discussed at the national level but could have implications uh, for taxing uh, here in Cape. Um, also, uh, there was a seminar on federal takings legislation. Um, 
Council Chair Cogasol tendered that and may want to comment more on that, um, but it was, a, it was a seminar regarding the negative financial impact on possible impact on municipalities and possible disruption of our zoning process. Uh, while we were there, we also met with uh, executive members of the Maine Municipal Association, discussed issues regarding uh, communities throughout the state. Uh, with them, we had the opportunity to meet with our congressional uh, delegation, both the two congressmen and our two senators, and had a face-to-face -face opportunity to discuss a number of issues. Uh, some of those were unfunded mandates, uh, the need for the right tax re uh, reform, federal takings, and flow control, among, among many others. Uh, flow control, although it was voted down in the House of Representatives, uh, may uh, be revived, uh, according to uh, Congressman Longley. Um, as a first-time attendee, uh, I'd like to say that uh, it was a great learning experience for me. It was nice to talk to other people from across the country um, that live in both large and small communities and face many of the same problems that, that we face and some of the innovative ways that they're dealing with uh, similar problems. So it was certainly a, a good learning experience for me. Thank you. Earth. You want to hear from Regional Waste? Or yes. we okay. Regional Waste Systems, we met at 8 o'clock last Thursday morning and stayed there until we got uh, a pretty good handle on the revenue uh, for 96 and 97. Uh, you probably saw in the paper where it's about $104.55 when we started out. We have crossed one big hurdle in that we've got all commercial waste and municipal waste at the same rate as it lands at RWS. No difference between commercial and municipal. We've been trying to do that for the last four years. We accomplish that now our job next Thursday when the executive committee meets at 5 o'clock and the board at 7 is to break this down even further and it looks like now that I'll be able to report back to Michael for his budget process that we'll be down somewhere between 93 and 95 dollars, which is a lot better than 110 that we started at. So we're going to keep at it and if we can, we'll even <coughs> bring it lower than that. When the bids are received from the haulers, which will be done very shortly, and the number of tons that they can bring us and the price on a one, two, or a three-year contract, then we can tell much better where we are and how much of the loss that we uh, lost because of flow control that we'll be able to bring back to RWS. Every bit that we can bring back of the commercial waste now is going to help us here at Cape Elizabeth uh, on our assessment that we get from them once a year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? Councilor Linnell. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I went down to the uh, uh, National League of Cities meeting in, in <coughs> conference in Washington also, uh, and I, I We'll point out I, I went at my own expense because uh, we only send two counselors uh, each year f uh, at uh, uh, on on the town's budget. Uh, but I went as because I'm Maine's representative to the uh, the steering and policy committees for energy, natural resources, and the environment. Um, but it was it was a, a typical day. I had a chance to meet with uh, two uh, recent presidential candidates. Met with uh, shook hands with Dick Luger, Senator Phil Graham. Uh, also shook hands with uh, Vice President Al Gore. Um, but uh, I am pleased to report that the steering committee uh, for the Energy, Environment, and Natural Resources uh, has, has put as a, one of the priorities studying the electric utility industry, specifically deregulation. Now, uh, this, is, this is important. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an issue that they're looking at in Augusta also because um, as the utilities uh, deregulate, one of the concerns is about stranded investments. Stranded investments nationally are estimated conservatively at $150 billion. Uh, in Maine, uh, our own utility, Central Maine Power, is rated the fourth worst utility in the nation in terms of the stranded investment. Uh, many of us are aware that the electric rates uh, in Maine are the second highest in New England. So this is an issue which I'm also working with the, the public advocate Steve Ward on. Um, so that as this uh, deregulation inevitably, inevitably occurs, that ratepayers are protected. Uh, thank you. Any other reports? Councilor McLaughlin? Not to be redundant, but I was there too <laughs> over the weekend. I'm on um, the National League of Cities Leadership Training Council. Unfortunately, I missed my 
day-long meeting for that due to the weather um, last Friday. Couldn't get through Logan have touched base with those folks. I did attend two pre-conference seminars and would like to encourage counselors who go to National League of Cities conferences in the future to take part in these seminars if they can get there the day or two ahead of time. The two that I attended were on Saturday. One was on advocacy skills, which was absolutely fantastic. There was a communications professor from a college in Texas who ran that seminar and had some wonderful ideas, which I will be sharing with the council and using you as guinea pigs probably to try some of them out. The second seminar I was able to attend was about council effectiveness and policy guidelines, which you, I know the council has been hearing from me relative to the budget process, which was a nice reinforcement for me. And you certainly will hear more about that. I was also able to participate in a luncheon hosted by the National League of Cities International Municipal Consortium, which is a relatively new subgroup of National League of Cities, uh, knowing the good host of people in Cape Elizabeth who are interested both business-wise and um, personally in international uh, connections, I thought this was something that was very good to be able to bring back to the community some more potential avenues to making connections at, at the international level. be very glad to share that information with anybody who'd like to be in touch with me. It also um, was a good warm-up to some extent for my upcoming um, trip sponsored by Rotary International to Buenos Aires next month. Second item I'd like to let the council know about and the citizens know about is Greater Portland Council of Government's Executive Committee did meet, have our monthly meeting last month. The topic was the main turnpike authority. There is one representative to the executive board who is encouraging Council of Governments to forward to the legislature a recommendation that the main turnpike authority and the tolls be eliminated. And I would be very glad, I personally am not in favor of that, but there will be a vote at the next GPCOG Executive Board, I believe on the 27th of this month, would be very interested in hearing from the public their views along those lines. Thank you. Any other reports? Councillor Reid. Hi, Madam Chairman, I'd like to report to the public that on the first Tuesday in April there will be uh, an opportunity beginning at 8 o'clock at Thomas Memorial <coughs> Library to meet with um, Sarah McCall, who is one of the uh, chairs of the Pedals and Pedestrian Committee, to uh, go over the results of the survey that over 800 members of Cape Elizabeth uh, were kind enough to respond regarding the bikeway, Greenbelt, and um, um, what was it? Third Sidewalk. Sidewalks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but um, that will be uh, public, and Sarah will be there to answer any questions. And of course, uh, the survey is on display at the library for anyone to see who hasn't. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I was just going to ask, could Council Reed repeat the when? when it's the is? first Tuesday night at 8 o'clock in April, and without a calendar. I believe it's the second. Someone will verify that. Um, Deborah Lane, I believe, has some announcements she'd like to make about the elections. Thank you. Just a quick reminder that nomination papers are available for town council and school board. They are due on Monday, March 25th, uh, on or before 5 p.m. in my office. There are two seats available for council and two for school board. And just a side note, as of today, there has only been one set of papers taken out for school board. So again, anyone interested in either town council or school board, please contact me. That date is April 2nd. Thank you. It's confirmed by the manager. Mr. McGovern, I believe you have an announcement you'd like to make. Yeah, I just wanted to relate to the council and to the public. Uh, I received a number of phone calls today indicating that they, the folks had heard that the Shore Road bikeway had been killed uh, were the terms I heard. I, I did receive a uh, fax from the two co-chairs of the ped Pedals and Pedestrian Committee, and I'd like to read that so everyone's that clear on what the committee did in fact do and uh, how they consider their action to, to, to be positioned as, as part of the whole process. Uh, it's dated March 8th, uh, addressed to me. At its meeting of March 6th, 1996, the Pedals and Pedestrians Committee took the following preliminary action. Motion by Bob Schumann, second by Bob Harrison, that it is the consensus of the committee 
that a non-motorized vehicle route be developed between the North Cape area and the town center. But given the restrictions and problems inherent with the present Maine Department of Transportation plan, paved four-foot wide shoulders on Shore Road are not an acceptable al alternative. The committee recommends that the town council investigate alternative paths which would accomplish this goal. Vote seven to one in favor of the motion. Uh, we wish to emphasize that this represents preliminary recommendation only and that the final recommendation will not be made until the committee's final report is prepared and approved and it's signed by Sarah McCall and Bob Bayross, the co-chairs of that committee. Thank you. This is just to dispel any rumors that we're starting up. We just wanted to clarify that point. Um, <clears throat> and I want to take this opportunity to commend the municipal employees of the town of Cape Elizabeth for their outstanding uh, performance this year and practically negligible claim on workers' compensation. Due to their performance, um, I believe, we saved approximately $69,000, or 44.5% of our budget from the past, according to your memo. And I think we all need to, um, to thank our workers for being conscientious and very careful, because it really does affect our pocketbooks as well. On to the minutes of meeting number 14 of 596. <coughs> there is a, um, a correction in the page that we were given. Page four, um, which was dealing with the pool study committee, I just asked that the clerk include the names of the people who are on that committee since we did announce them at that time. Are there any other additions or corrections? If not, I'll take a motion to approve them as amended. I, I make that motion. Second. All in favor? Seven zero. On to number 110, to consider the, consider the status of land acquisition necessary for the licensing of the refuse disposal area and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern. Yes, the town attorney as well as Michael Hill during the absence of the town attorney last week have been working predominantly on this issue. Uh, we've had an exchange of faxes as late as late this afternoon. And uh, there are a number of issues that I think the town council should be aware of. Uh, that involve the negotiations, preferably in executive session, uh, since uh, I don't even, at this point, have the latest update from the town attorney on what's transpired since uh, mid-afternoon. Mid Is there a mo motion for us to go into executive session to discuss with legal counsel? So moved. Is there a second? Does that mean we go right now? Right now. Without taking care of the rest of the agenda, and the people are going to have to wait until we come back? That's right. Is that correct? Is there a second? There's no way of really discussing this unless we do have a chance to talk to our attorney. Why don't you withdraw your mind? Why? I need a second. Well, I, I, I think we need to know what the latest is, and I think it's appropriate to hear it from the town attorney in executive session. We could start somewhere. We can't even begin to start if we don't have all the current information. That's the only way we'll get it. Just if, if I might, Madam Chairman, there, there are, as far as the process for this evening, uh, it is possible that after the executive session, Mr. Leahy might need some time to meet privately uh, with uh, the other party involved in this to have a discussion with them as to where certain offers stand. You know, maybe if you wanted to, since I sense a certain reluctance to go into executive session at this point, is begin some of the other items, then take up this item, and then, you know, still leave time to, you know, stick it in the middle somewhere so that uh, then th you'll still be doing other business while they go off and have some other conversations to let, let everyone know if everyone's in agreement. Where that point would be, would be, I'm not sure of it. We go table <clears throat> table until later in the in the in the meeting. Could I, yes. Could I just withdraw, withdraw my motion for the moment. If I may. John. Is his motion motion withdrawn? Yes, he do, he withdrew okay, it. I'd like to move that we take up item number one ten, out of order and after item one twenty one. Is 
Second. After item 121. You want to approve the, the warrants? Yes. I move that we take it up after item 121. I second. Council McLaughlin. I have the reluctance of going into executive session not knowing how long we're going to be in there and holding up every other item on the agenda, and I think that's what the purpose of your motion is. I also hear what the manager is saying, that that may not leave time for the for our attorney to conduct what apparently we might have to keep negotiating. I'll tell, I'm just really upset that we have to do this. I thought it was all going to be ready when we got here tonight. I just, I'm very frustrated that this is not ready to go. And this is how this whole thing seems to have gone over the last year. And this does not help my approach to it. I didn't mean to give, you know, the impression, you know, there's been a lot of discussion, there's been a lot of issues, but ultimately when there are a couple of issues of disagreement, only the council can resolve them. And we, we nail, merely need to have an opportunity to speak with the town council to see where you fall on them. We, we aren't able to negotiate a deal as staff without knowing fully where the council is. That, that's the, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a case that, the, that either party has not come to the table and had a lot of discussion over the period since your last meeting. It was sort of an either or situation. And counsel, um, excuse me, you're not quite counsel yet. Our town attorney, Tom Leahy, would like to make a comment. Yes, if I could, I think maybe we can move this along. Um, I don't have the vote of last month's meeting, but it was clear to me that I was supposed to go and meet with Mr. Katsafikas and come back with an alternative to a taking if possible. There was a desire if we could come up with an alternative. We have. We have an alternative. Um, and that's what I want to present to you in executive session and then tell you that if that's not acceptable, then what the procedure will be tonight. It's as simple as that. Uh, we have there, we are in agreement as to what the alternative is. The question is, you, you don't have that in front of you, and I want to explain what the alternative is to the taking that's on the agenda. So we have asked them to present an offer by a certain date that they have, and the manager and I are prepared to make that recommendation and explain it to you in executive session. There's nothing more that can be done without going without through this, our direction. With, with, with the other parties at this point, because we have reached the end of the line. We know what the options are. It's up to you now to make a decision what, what you want to do with those options. We have a motion to take this item up after item 121. Any further discussion on that motion, Bill? Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I don't think it's fair for these other people to come in here and for us going into executive session. And I feel there's a couple of questions I would like to see answered. And uh, I think it would take more discussion than some of you people realize. Maybe not, but uh, I don't think it's fair to the other people. And, uh, so you're, support that, you're supporting the motion to table this until after item 121? That's the best I would do. Okay, all those in favor? Looks like one's opposed. Okay, so we will put this on hold, keep everyone in suspense for a while. Um, on to item 111, to consider a recommendation from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission regarding a request from <coughs> Cape Elizabeth Little League to use certain fields and spaces at Fort Williams Park from April 6, 1996 to June 26, 1996 and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? I believe we have the chairman of the Fort Williams Committee present. Jeff's here, yes. Jeff, would you like to just run this through for the council? Thank you. Is there any? Good evening. My name is Jeff Van Fleet. I'm chairman of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, we have a whole plate of uh, items here from 111 through uh, 114. Why don't uh, you present them all and we'll vote on them separately? Pardon? Why don't you present them all, and then we'll vote on them separately? Excellent. It'll be faster that way. Uh, item 111 uh, is a request uh, from the Little League to use the fields, a number of fields at uh, the fort, uh, basically in the same manner that they have been used in the past. Uh, stadium field, outfield area, uh, officer's row field. Uh, this was approved uh, 
uh, by everyone uh, on the Commission with one abstention. Uh, there were some uh, citizens at the meeting who expressed uh, general concern about using uh, not only that particular area for athletic pursuits, but any part of the Fort Williams for athletics. Uh, they were heard, and uh, the vote reflects the uh, Commission's recommendation to uh, allow the, the use of the, the spaces by Middle Lake. Uh, so that's 111. The uh, Portland Symphony Orchestra uh, has been a long-term uh, event uh, at the fort. Uh, the only difference this year is that attendance will be limited to 5,000 uh, concert goers in order to, uh, uh, I guess, mitigate some of the uh, effects of overcrowding. There was a, a minor trash uh, problem last year, uh, very minor, but we're, we're all in sync on how that's going to be handled. Uh, that was approved. The uh, Multiple Sclerosis Society, uh, again, using it for a, uh, the MS Walk, April 21st, uh, another event that uh, has historically been uh, allowed in the fort and continues to uh, receive uh, the commission support. And finally, item 114 uh, was a uh, <clears throat> request to use it for a uh, public kite fly on April Seventh, uh, once again, uh, something that has been uh, approved in the past and enjoyed by the public. And as with uh, all the items except the Little League item, uh, uh, we have heard no uh, uh, negative comments about any of these uh, events. And uh, we encourage uh, you to accept our recommendation. Thank you very much. Thank you, your committee, for your work. And does anyone here have a question? I have one, I have one question. When the Little League is in use in these fields, between the time that is specified here, if another group get in there, do they come along and kick them out? Or are they somebody there all the time? The, uh, the Little League uses them. They have times, uh, you know, during the So they're in use they, all the time can, by the Little League? Uh, I'm not sure if there's not a hiatus somewhere in there where there's a, an hour or two that someone else can co go in and use them. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. But yes, the Little League would have precedence over those fields uh, at that time. Do you have anything you want to say? Yes, Rosemary. Having sat through some of those, uh, very often the next teams are waiting for the previous game to finish on Saturdays, especially when there are three games or two games um, being held at the same time, but not during the practices and not in the evening, five to eight. Councilor Reed. Madam Chairman, I move that we accept the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission for a request from the Cape Elizabeth Little League to use certain fields and spaces at Fort Williams Park from April 6, 1996 until June 26, 1996. Second. Discussion? All in favor? To 7 0. Item number 112. Madam Chairman, I move that we accept the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission regarding a request from the Portland Symphony Orchestra to utilize Fort Williams Park on July 3, 1996. Second. Discussion? All in favor? It's a 7 0. Item number 113. We'll let someone else do it. Councilor <laughs> McLaughlin. <laughs> Madam Chairman. I move that the Council approve the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission regarding the request from the Multiple Sclerosis Society to utilize Fort Williams Park for the April 21, 1996 MS walk. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? The 7 0. Council Linnell? Uh, in the interest Item of. Number 114. Yes, in the interest of moving things along, uh, I move that we. Uh, Consider recommendation from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission for Northern Sky Toys to hold a public kite fly on April 7, 1996 at Fort Williams Park. Second. Take. Discussion? All those in favor? Oh, wait. Excuse me. Excuse you me. said consider where you should be approving. You're moving that we, ah, we I'm so sorry. amend. Thank you. I'll amend. Second. To approve. So amend. All those in favor? The 7 0. On to item number 115. 
to consider acknowledging the receipt of a report of the Public Safety Needs Committee and take any necessary action. First of all, I want to thank um, Councillor <coughs> Irv Chapel, who chaired this committee and gave it his usual 110 um, percent and his committee, and I will turn it over to him to give us the introduction. Yeah. You want that from up here? Or? Wherever you feel more comfortable. Well, I got it. Change hats and get out here. All right. Okay. Probably the council is the only ones that have the booklets, but we're going to take you through it uh, in as quick as we can tonight. And uh, I had a committee uh, working with me the past eight months, nine months, and let me tell you, it was a wonderful committee. It's the best one I've worked with in five years' time. They were myself, Stephen Etzel, Gil Jordan, Paula Liberty, Michael Maroon, Charles Wilson, Catherine Ray, the Chief of Police, the Chief of the Fire Department, and Michael McGovern. One hell of a committee. And they did a great job on something that we started way back in 1989, in 1990 when we had the Facilities Management Committee and we brought in a report to the council and built the highway garage, did the community center, and in that same report we had what we thought was going to be good for the fire and the police. Budget restraints and so forth kept that on hold. We met in 92, the manager, the two chiefs and myself for lunch, kept it going, and finally the council reactivated that committee with two additions about nine months ago, and we've been working on it. I've recognized the committee members, and I've got to tell you that this Bob Howe from Terry and Architects was one of the greatest helps that I've ever seen on a committee. He took over 25, 26 different scenarios that we had. You know how you are when you get two chiefs and an ex-chief and a contractor, and uh, mix them all together with the rest of us. Boy, did we have proposals. So he kept bringing in drawings and drawings, and he never knew where he was going or where he was coming, but he kept it all even for us and did a fine job. I want to commend him for it, along with the committee. The, uh, what happened was that it was a little bit harder this time because we didn't have just the building over there that you know as the police and fire department building to work with, we had the possibilities of a garage next door. What will work where? That's the reason for 25 different diagrams. We moved buildings over here, we moved them back over there, we put them together out here in the parking lot, we moved the parking lot over here. We did everything we could think of, and Bob will take you through those uh, tonight. And finally, we came up with two plans, one for police and one for fire, that this committee unanimously approved and for submittal to the council for them to look at and see which way they'd like to go. The wonderful part about it is we have been able to space it so that it is phased in. We can do the work on one building and use the other one just as it is until that's ready, move part and move the other one and do that work sometime in the future. In other words, it'll be a phased project which is very important right now for the uh, budget and for the way the town has spent money the past five or six years, which was needed, but they left out one thing in all this spending. I'm not against taking care of children. I had my gang all graduate from here, three children and two grandchildren from Cape Elizabeth schools, and I think it's wonderful what they've done over there. But we forgot the police and the fire department. We really forgot them. I've had so many people say, raise their pay, but don't give them a new building. Well, by golly, let me tell you, if you did what they have done since 1990, when we first started this report, and still keep two departments going over in that building, you ought to take a walk through. You really should. They are cramped. They don't have room to do their job. And they actually have to go out in the cars if they've got somebody to speak to if they want any privacy, because there's no privacy in the building whatsoever. So we've got to do something for the police and fire department of this town. This is one way of doing it, 
and that's why we're submitting it tonight, and we're very proud of it, and I'm very proud of the committee. Bob, it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, 25 schemes? I think it was more like 45, but you never saw it. the other 20. Can I move this? Here. Thank you, Herb. Madam Chairman. What I'd like to do is just briefly go through um, the report, um, not in detail, but so that everyone understands the approach that uh, the uh, committee took and the charge that was presented to the committee. Um, the 1990 Municipal Facilities Study uh, really set forth uh, some goals for a new public safety building. Um, no action was taken. But a number of things happened since 1990 that uh, made a uh, second look at the uh, uh, concept of a new public safety building um, very desirable. Um, the 1990 report spells out a number of needs for the departments. And uh, in summary, I've got a flip chart here that goes through those needs. Um, they're reflected in the 1990 report and then repeated again in the uh, 96 report. Um, but the 96 report, really, the objective of that study was really to def uh, identify and explore certain site constraints of known properties and, the, and, develop, and look at the opportunities to develop a preferred option on a number of, op uh, a number of sites. Now, um, those 25 sites um, um, and permutations thereof uh, consisted of the uh, garage site next door, property to the south, uh, expansion of the property uh, across the street, um, and um, possibility of some uh, development on the town hall property in the back of the parking lot. Um, those permutations can get voluminous. Um, one of the, at the outset, we developed a, a brief program for the project, uh, projects. And what we did, we called that the concept program. Uh, it's something that hasn't thoroughly been tested, but it is close. Um, and it identifies the needs. And I want to take you through this chart just briefly. Um, there are uh, here a column for existing spaces in the public safety building, and a column for total amount of need over there. Uh, this is just for the police department. And there is a number at the bottom showing that the police occupy about 1,314 1, square feet of net program space. It doesn't include boilers and corridor space, but that's a net program space. Over here, a column talks about a net uh, program space of 5,370 square feet, a considerable increase. This is a, reflects really, in, uh, with very minor modifications, a similar need that was expressed in 1990. So that, that demand hasn't diminished at all. It's, it's, just, it's, it's gotten tighter over there, as Irv has mentioned. And the space requirements or uh, desirability of, uh, to get the type of, um, uh, to offer the type of uh, services that are necessary uh, really remain. We did a similar uh, diagram, a chart for fire department. Again, in the, re in the report, it's a concept uh, program we developed. And there was a wish list of some 8,000 square feet for a five bay apparatus uh, um, uh, uh, bay that would uh, obviously uh, put tremendous demands on almost any site for circulation, uh, access, uh, matter of scale uh, in the town center. Um, some really big issues were presented by that uh, space demand. This space demand, this demand, uh, uh, space needs here reflects the existing space used by the police, I mean the fire department. Uh, 3,714 square feet over there right now. A demand for um, 11,928 square feet, uh, considering a five bay apparatus. Uh, garage. It considers a meeting room, sizable, 
meeting room of almost uh, of 11 of 1,156 square feet. There are a lot of things in here. These programs, if you read the report, that talk about uh, facilities for uh, obviously uh, bathroom facilities, locker facilities. Uh, there are no locker facilities for female officers. Um, there are uh, spaces are cramped. Uh, reports are given on, in, on the laps of people. Um, privacy is an issue, uh, and uh, uh, they're having a tough time meeting those, uh, those demands. Part of the report looks at the safety building as it is, and I think that was instructional for a number of reasons. It tells us that there is certainly a, a value to the building. For some renovation dollars, uh, that building can be brought up to code, improve better mechanical systems. It can be used to support a lot of the present needs, but it can't satisfy all of them. And it became, became very clear that the site wouldn't support all the needs on, for both departments on that site. And that, was, that number was useful as we weighed the costs for any new facilities. I want to re reiterate what I uh, said earlier. The cost for these pro this program, the, the uh, uh, identified in this report, are conceptual costs. They are based on first flush of a program dem uh, demands. Um, should this should a public facility go forward, it is the recommendation of the report that thorough investigation be done and, I, and so that the exact program is identified, idiosyncrasies of sites are, are, are ironed out, and costs are determined before you appropriate money for a new building. Uh, this is very important. It's, it's, it's similar to the process that you would go through with almost any public uh, project. The school went through that type of project, uh, that process, that is. Um, we need to do some early conceptual design for a specific building okay, on a specific site. There are recommendations, obviously, in this report where that, what that conceptual design should involve. I won't go through all 25 schemes outlined here. Uh, other than to say we tried to give a brief description of it and some of the good parts and the bad parts for each, each one. Ultimately, scheme number, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, 18 and 22, uh, satisfied most succinctly um, the uh, requests by the departments and the limitations placed on those programs by the sites and the uh, respect of uh, the town center plan and the committee's interest in um, frugally administering uh, the budget. I want to uh, show you that plan right now. <coughs> this is actually identifying uh, scheme number 11 and 22 of those two schemes that were expanded upon. They're shown in one drawing now. That drawing is attached in the appendix. Bob, why don't you put that out in front so the can public you, can see it better? Sure. <clears throat> You've got a plan, so yes. you yeah, got to we point do. it that way, OK? The gas station lot, or that lot to the north of Town Hall, um, with a number of uh, reiteration of trying to squeeze uh, the, police, uh, the police and the fire, or the fire department on that um, site, it became very clear that it would be very desirable that it would uh, best be suited for one building, a building that would maintain a good visual corridor down uh, Route 77 to Town Hall that would not challenge the scale and, and scope, I mean, the scale and, and the uh, 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 
the, the concepts behind, behind the uh, zoning plans uh, of town center that would adequately supply, uh, supply the parking that's required by the police, um, accommodate, be a good neighbor to the town hall, uh, provide amenities of open space, um, and uh, really become, uh, uh, as I said, a good neighbor to the, um, to the town center. Um, it consists primarily of a building of about 7,400 square feet. That 7,400 square feet includes circulation and me uh, mechanical rooms, and that's total square footage. And that comes from, a con again, a concept program. That program is in this report um, and uh, should be a basis for, for going forward with a design, uh, at least an early design. You can see from the diagram that we have circulation in and out on the north drive side for, for uh, parking. There is a sally port on the back side, or at least a garage. Not too sure what that actually is. Um, there is parking for some uh, 38 cars on that, in and around that uh, uh, site. There's a link back to Town Hall. The Town Hall circulation around Town Hall does, uh, remains the same. Um, we haven't tried to uh, change that pattern. We explored a number of different schemes. I had them going left and right, over, under, around about, through, within, over, and out. But it, none of them really worked very well. I didn't get all the prepositions, but they're close. Um, it was, uh, there's a lot of features to this plan for the uh, police station. Uh, that are uh, uh, real pluses, the committee felt. Um, we looked at some of the dollars for that project. Um, those dollars are generated from uh, present known building costs and uh, historical data and uh, cost uh, guidelines. And the number given in the report, in the summary, is a range. And I can't emphasize enough but it is a range, and it needs, again, to be examined more thoroughly in specific. We did not try to lay a floor plan out for the 7,400 square feet. So we don't know what's upstairs. We don't know specifically what's downstairs. But we do know, in concept, that a building of 7,400 square feet will comfortably sit on this site, will cost in a range of a certain amount of money, and this approach is recommended by the, building, by the uh, committee. A similar exercise across the street. We looked at uh, um, expansions further towards the public works garage. We added two-story buildings on it. We added um, uh, over the property line. We, went, uh, we trespassed all over the place. Um, ultimately, it came down to um, the worth of the present building. Um, it has a cer certain value. Um, the idea that moving or relocating in, uh, the building, uh, actually rebuilding, we looked at a scheme rebuilding just to the south on that, on that same site. Uh, it got very expensive for site costs and site development. There, are, there was needs for five bays uh, as, defi as def um, defined in the program. And as we looked at renovating one of these buildings, we realized we already had four bays. While we didn't have the square feet in those four bays to accommodate for all the equipment, the wet team, for instance, when fire chief would dearly like to get all this, this equipment in under one roof, we could, by adding two bays to the present building, and the way that would be done is the meeting room, and that meeting room is, uh, there's a dividing wall between the apparatus bay and the meeting room. The meeting room would be demolished. Two new bays would be constructed in that location. And while we're constructing those two new bays, uh, a second story would be added in that location to take care of the meeting room needs and uh, kitchens and things like that that are identified in the program. The rest of the building would just be modified, uh, renovated. Uh, um, there would be no addition done to it. Um, obviously, we're going to need new mechanical systems. There may be, need to be interior uh, modifications to a petition layout, things of that nature. But again, the report doesn't say that uh, the fire chief occupies this, this location. 
All it says is that we can fit in on this site a, a two bay addition and accommodate the police, I mean the fire department's needs um, to the year 2015. Um, that site does include expansion of some parking space towards the public works garage, as you can see in the bottom of the diagram. There's an uh, additional parking uh, expansion. Um, the bay is, uh, is described here on the <laughs> south side. Um, this, uh, this, uh, the sight lines, uh, while not excellent, are uh, least familiar to everybody. The apron is good location and uh, uh, the building is very usable. So we felt that it was a uh, frugal use of, uh, of the dollars to uh, pursue that, that direction. It also gave a uh, number of the building committees, uh, I mean the number of the committee's uh, interests were addressed in there is um, real concern that that building, the image of that building could be improved. Its presence on um, Route 77 across from Town Hall could be more significant. It could lend more character to the town center plan um, and we should uh, uh, pursue that. So there are, have been dollars allocated to some type of architectural modifications on the exterior as we put a second story over that bay. Again, without being specific um, about who sits where and, and what, what bay has the wet team in it and what bay has the ladder truck in it, although I think the, chief's, uh, uh, the chief certainly has a concept about that. Um, uh, that total project budget, again, is, is a range and needs to be tested. Um, what the report ultimately recommends is that the town council uh, um, establish a, a, build, a building committee to examine uh, the design of a new police facility on the gas station lot to the north of town hall. And again, I'd like to reiterate that this, what we're establishing is a building committee to examine the conceptual design of the specifics of that building to identify real costs, uh, both site implications, um, springing, using this report as, as a foundation for um, a con that concept. So with that, I will uh, rest and uh, take any questions. Yes, Councilor Chapel. I haven't got any questions for him. Is anybody else? <laughs> Councillor Lynette. Well, I was just going to suggest uh, if we uh, have a work session on this uh, sometime, you'd no doubt be available to Absolutely. answer our questions yep. there. It might be more appropriate, is what I'm thinking. But we, yes. well, we can also spend more time and give it the attention it deserves. Uh, so I guess that's what, that would be my inclination. Councillor Reed. Well, I would say uh, I'm not in a position to make a motion to establish a building committee or to build the police station next door, but I would like to make a motion that we uh, acknowledge receipt and gratefully for the report and also that we refer the um, study to workshop and act on it uh, in an appropriate time. Second a motion. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, you are discussion. No, I just wanted to commend the committee um, for their hard work. I had the opportunity to sit in on a couple committee meetings, and uh, certainly Councilman Chapel kept the committee focused and working towards its goal, and obviously has uh, put out a commendable product. I'd also like to say that uh, I have personal experience as a EMT on the rescue squad that trying to back that rescue ambulance into those narrow bays over there that suddenly that uh, truck becomes about 20 feet wide and those bays look like they're about five feet wide. So from my personal experience, there's definitely a need um, to uh, expand over there at the fire department. Any other comments, Councilor Jordan? I would just like to say I think the need is there. I have no problem agreeing to that, but I think what uh, Councilor Nell said, we need a workshop and get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty of it, in my opinion. I agree, all those in favor? Oh, I, you want to make Sorry. a comment? Please. It'll be fast tonight. 
I've heard from a number of citizens who knew this report was forthcoming, and I have assured them and just want to reiterate publicly that when this is on a council workshop, that that will be so advertised, and citizens are certainly welcome to attend such workshops to hear the council deliberations and any other information that's put forth. Thank you. Always. And I personally want to thank the whole committee. It is an impressive piece of work, particularly with the time constraints. All those in favor of setting this to workshop. It's a 7 0 to set it for workshop, and it will be publicized. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bob. The committee thanks you. On to item number 116 to consider a request from the Citizens for Better Dental, Dental Health to schedule a November 1996 referendum vote on fluoridation of the public water supply. Mr. McGovern, do you want to do an introduction? Did Mrs. Lane wish to do it? Oh, Mrs. Lane. Lane. Ms. Lane. Ms. Lane, excuse me. <laughs> Debbie. That would be great. Thank you. This evening we have with us Dr. Ortengren, who has brought this um, before the council. Uh, in your packets, you did receive information on Citizens for Better Dental Health. What they are requesting is that the council place on the November 1996 referendum ballot to put this before the public. And I think Dr. Ortengren might want to give a little bit more detail. Thank you. If you please just come up to the podium and give us your name and address. Uh, my name is James Ortengren. Uh, I reside at 15 Mountain View Road, Cape Elizabeth. Um, like to make this brief, I'd like to just read a, a little prepared statement that I have uh, for you. Uh, I would like to share some. Uh, thoughts about this issue. I'm a general dentist practicing in South Portland for the last nine years. Uh, I would like to offer my thoughts as to why Cape Elizabeth Town Council should vote to place the fluoridation question on the November 1996 ballot. I shall limit my thoughts to whether the question is worthy to vote upon and not to whether an individual should vote or should not vote for or against this issue. Um, is this issue significant and important? Currently, over 144 million people in the U.S. drink water containing enough fluoride to provide dental benefits. 62% of all Americans on public water supplies utilize optimally fluoridated water. 42 of the 50 largest cities in the United States also provide uh, that benefit. In Maine, 64 public utilities provide fluoridated water to 105 Maine communities, of which the town of Norway was the first in 1952. Maine makes fluoridated water available to 27 percent of its population as compared to a national average of 54 percent. Is this issue significant and important? I would say yes is because it's reasonable to allow our citizens to once again review this, uh, an issue which is currently used by so many people. Um, is it time to address this issue again? In the last time the citizens of Greater Portland had an opportunity to vote on the issue was 20 years ago, 1976. 20 years could likely be termed a generation, uh, thus a whole generation in the Greater Portland area have not had say in whether they wish to be included in the single most effective public health measure to improve dental health or oral health. Uh, over 50 years have passed since the first U.S. community started fluoridating its water supply in 1945. Is it time to address the issue again? I say yes, because 20 years between votes and 50 years of documented safe and effective use indicate that this question is not frivolous, but rather a serious public health issue. A whole new generation should have the opportunity to debate this issue. Um, is there any benefit to the community? Uh, my purpose this evening is not to discuss my own opinions, rather than to say that the scientific literature is extensive and conclusive regarding the safety and efficacy of water fluoridation. It is the most equitable way to protect the community against dental decay. Other methods of fluoride delivery, uh, because they are more expensive, 
and require patient compliance benefit only those people who can afford them and are motivated to seek them out and use them properly. Is there a benefit to the community? I say yes, because water fluoridation benefits everyone, regardless of socioeconomic status. Is there a valid reason to, place, to not place this on the issue before the voters? Um, water fluoridation benefits all members of the community. However, whether one agrees or disagrees with the issue, the information, education, scrutiny, which open debate inspires, will certainly enrich all those who participate. Is there a valid reason not to place the issue on the ballot? I say no. And finally, as a dentist and a health care provider, I have studied and worked my entire adult life to help people. Uh, the sum of all the people I helped in my career would pale and by comparison to the number of people that would be helped by fluoridation of our community. Thank you very much for your time. I do have uh, a list of 14 of pa 14 of my patients that uh, came in to me this week who signed a pseudo petition saying they would support having this issue on the ballot. And I submit this to you. Thank you. Thank you. If you, um, one further thing, I have a, uh, a sheet supplied by Portland Water District that outlines a cost estimate. Are you, we have that. You've had that now? We have that. Made available by Dana Perkins? Yes. Correct? It's dated March 7th. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. very much for your time. Thank you. It's on your place when you came in tonight. <coughs> Uh, Ms. Lane, just to clarify, perhaps for the public, I know the council are, already has this information. There are two ways in which this issue can get on the ballot. One is by a citizen petition. Another is by a majority vote of the majority of councilors in the ten communities that are in the Portland Water District, district I guess you'd call it. Um, so the, this group is going to these ten communities and needs six of those communities to vote to have this placed on the ballot in November. So that's the approach that they decide to take. Thank you. Councilor Reed. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I would like to thank the good doctor for calling me uh, and discussing these issues with me uh, before we got this in our packet. Also, that the uh, calls are already coming from other than the dental community to uh, do this so other people know a little bit about this already. I did have an administrative question. Um, when people have questions, are you going to have handouts that are available? that we can give them so our town staff is not spending hours or even minutes um, disseminating information on your behalf? So there would be a fact sheet or something available? Very good. Perhaps you may want to contact our Cape Courier. They may be interested in, in that information. That has fairly wide dissemination in the town. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion and then um, further discussion if appropriate. Thank you. The, the Cape Elizabeth, my motion is that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council hereby calls for a referendum vote in November 1996 to determine if fluoride should be added to the Portland Water District, to the public water supply, and to, requ and to request that the town clerk notify the district and all district communities of the town council's action. Second. Discussion? I believe Mr. McGovern wanted to make a yeah. comment. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify uh, we envision we will get a lot of comments uh, and calls. Our response would be to give a phone number of a responsible person. We would not have in the office material that we would give out uh, from this group uh, on the particular issue. People do vote in our office and, and you know, just like any other ballot issue, uh, we simply do not have material uh, that represents one side or the other that we give out in the town office. Councillor Jordan. Are we allowed to ask a couple of questions to the doctor at this point? If you'd like to. Because old people look at things a little different. Does that have a taste in the water? I've had that question asked me already. I wouldn't even know it's there. So the 
paste that people buy that has it fluoride in it is inadequate to do the job? Please. Then everyone could hear. Uh, in response to your question, uh, fluoride in the water supply is totally non-detectable. You cannot taste it. You cannot smell it. Unlike chlorine, um, you will never know that it's there unless you don't have cavities. <laughs> 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 uh, Fluoride in the toothpaste is in very high quantities, very hard, uh, and it's very efficacious, or it works very, very well. However, you need to use it to benefit by that. And not everyone uh, uses toothpaste, amazingly, and not everyone sees a dentist, and not everyone um, uses fluoride mouth rinse. And there's, there's lots of reasons why people don't do things that are should be used, but it's not a um, they're only used by certain people who can afford to buy toothpaste. Literally, there are lots of people who do not buy toothpaste, do not buy toothbrushes. They just can't afford them. So, so what you're saying then, this is a way for everybody and anybody to get? This is the most cost effective. This has been proven uh, to, sh to be proven the most cost effective way to deliver fluoride to everyone, regardless of whether they're living on the Cape Shore or they are uh, down and out and have uh, no ability to see a dentist or no ability to pay for fluoride toothpaste. Okay, thank you. Councilor McGinty. Um, I'd just like to state that I had a telephone conversation with the doctor and um, I, I consider this to be a process question um, as opposed to the issue of whether the pros and cons and I purposely did not read the material that was in our packet because I didn't want to be influenced one way or the other. Um, I will be supporting the motion and uh, for the purpose, obviously, I think that the voters should make the final decision on the pros and cons of that. Thank you. All those in favor of setting this to um, referendum in November of 96 to 7 zero. Thank and you I much. believe the town of Scarborough has also elected to do the same. Town of Scarborough has passed, uh, and last night the town of Standish also agreed. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all your information and your willingness to, to answer our questions. On to item number 117 to consider authorizing an expense of up to $1,500 for two basketball hoops on the Cape Elizabeth High School property and take any necessary action. I believe this is sponsored by Councillor Reed. If you'd like to introduce it. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the reason that this item is there today is uh, because if approved tonight, the Public Works Department can do this in the next month or so. But the need uh, was identified last summer when the, the basketball um, the boys' basketball team had to have practice called off because it was raining. So the community services uh, kids who would normally be outside playing had to go inside to the gym. It's the first time I uh, had even thought about that as a problem. Um, so I met with Rick DeFusco, Keith Weatherby, and Sue uh, Weatherby to see if we couldn't do something. And I think everyone knows about the uh, amount of material we've seen lately about the recreational needs in this town. I spoke with the town manager and the business manager regarding um, interest that has been accumulating on the unspent money for the 1994 school bond issue. Funds are available. The town um, public works director, Bob Malley, chose what he wanted for the site and indicated that at about $500 per unit and $500 in labor cost, he could, in fact, put in the, up, the new student parking lot of the high school to outdoor um, basketball hoops for immediate uh, use of the students when there are no cars in the parking lot. <laughs> so I move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? I'd just like to indicate, in addition to the folks Rosemary spoke to, Councilor Reed, I also did review it with the superintendent of schools and the uh, high school principal, and both would welcome the addition. Mm -hmm. Councilor Nell? I just wanted to say I think it would be money well spent. 
Councillor Jordan. I have no problem with the basketball hoop, and I, I think it would be money well spent. But I can't see tucking $500 or so in there for the highway department, which is going to be paid anyway. If she said $500 a hoop and we got $1,500 there, there's $500 there for somebody else. That's the only thing I'm against. Michael, do you want to respond to they, that? There will not be any financial credit at all to the Department of Public Works. We're all doing this out of uh, uh, respect yeah. for uh, the recreational need of the kids and uh, simply would be in response to a request from the council. I, I agree with that 100%, but I didn't, just couldn't understand why the extra 500 bucks was in there. What it's for, where does it go? Does it go in the surplus of the next year? No, it's not going anywhere. Councillor Reed was just trying to properly represent the true cost of the community when you look at both the, the out-of-pocket expense as well as the, uh, uh, the labor expense. The, we would not expend any, bit mo any more than the out-of-pocket expense. Uh, chances are this would be less than 1500 It is worded up to 1500 but uh, she, I, Ms. Uh, Councillor Reed was appropriate in pointing out that there's a labor cost as well, but it, it won't be a credit to them. It'll be a credit to them, but not a financial credit. <laughs> it's not an add-on. No. All those in favor of the motion? <coughs> Seven zero. Mr. Malley can begin tomorrow if we good weather. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get spring rolling here as best I can. To consider item number 118, a report from the appointments <coughs> committee regarding vacancies on town boards, commissions, and committees, and take any necessary action. And I turn this over to Councillor Linnell, who's chairman of the appointments committee. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, we've been busy of late uh, filling more slots and more committees. Um, and the, uh, the Cape Elizabeth School Study, uh, School Service Delivery Study Committee was an offshoot from the uh, Service Del Delivery Options C Committee, uh, which was so successful that it, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to uh, study the, uh, the services offered by the schools. Um, and so, and those are uh, not including academic issues, uh, transportation, um, maintenance, facilities, and so forth. So, uh, the, uh, I would like to uh, move the, uh, well, I'll tell you who the, the citizens that we're recommending uh, on the School Service Delivery Study Committee are Gilbert Jordan, Michael Reardon, Richard Nest, James Granulati, Molly McCoslin, Judy Rowe, and Mary Gale. And for the uh, community services, we're rec recommending Kate Borson. So my motion is to uh, approve uh, all of them for those committees. Second. Discussion, Councillor Reid. Um, in that motion, should you say that? Um, no, thank you. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I'm glad you two understand what the we, question we know. was. But, um, Sorry, it was obviously. administrative. Okay, Councilor McLaughlin, excuse Thank you. Me. Just want to add that we had um, a couple of school board representatives join the Council Appointments Committee when we were working on the school <coughs> SDAR um, review for interview process. That was helpful to have input, especially since it's reviewing that they have to review over. Thank you. Any further comments? Uh, Councilor? Madam Chair, I just wanted to add that uh, the uh, sort of the jet lag uh, is catching up with me, uh, uh, so I'm not as articulate as I normally am. Uh, but anyway. No Thank you for trying. All those in favor? That's a 7-0. Job well done. You have been working hard this year. Item number 119, to consider <coughs> referring to the Finance Committee the proposed fiscal year 1997 municipal budget and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. As uh, most of the citizens probably read in this morning's newspaper and as they will be reading in the, the next edition of the Cape Courier, uh, the municipal budget uh, has come in at a 4.3% increase in expenditures, uh, slightly above the rate of inflation. Uh, that's primarily due to some issues involving uh, the need to adjust uh, RWS fees 
as well as uh, the fact that if I think as we look at these budgets over the last few years, they've been significantly restrained. The good news is that non-property tax revenues are estimated to rise 7.33 percent. Uh, those fund 40 percent of the budget. Uh, so therefore, we are able to uh, go for a third straight year without a tax increase for the municipal side of the budget. And this year, it includes the county as well. Uh, I won't make a lengthier presentation this evening in the interest of time. Uh, the Finance Committee, should this be referred to them, uh, does have a, a schedule planned for its review, and I would defer to others to announce that schedule. Okay, I'll call on Janet McLaughlin, who's Finance Committee Chair. I believe you'd like to announce the dates of the meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Finance Committee hopefully will be receiving this budget this evening. We have scheduled some workshop sessions for the Finance Committee to review. There will be opportunities at those workshop sessions for public input. We do not want to wait until the public hearing in May for public input. I also encourage people to be in touch with the town councilors. If you, you have any questions or comments, you don't have to wait for the workshops and you don't have to wait for the public hearing. The schedule as it stands right now is for basically a full day session on Saturday, March 30th starting at 8 a.m. and running through until, I would guess, 4, 4.30 that afternoon. The schedule of discussion is available at the town hall and hopefully will also be on the cable channel as well for that, after, for that day's work. The second workshop that the Finance Committee will hold on the budget will be on Thursday evening, April 4th, starting at 7.30. That is scheduled to be a review of the library budget and capital projects. Also, follow up on issues raised at the previous Saturday meeting. On Monday, April 22nd, that evening at 7.30, the Council's Finance Committee, which is the committee of the whole council, will review the community services budget and town enterprise funds. And on Thursday, April 25th, the Council will, re will review the school budget. At this point, the public hearing on the budget is scheduled for the May Council meeting, and that is on Monday, May 13th. I have been exhorting the Council through this year to keep budget issues in mind and to focus on policy discussions. That's what I intend to be the primary focus of our discussion on the Saturday workshop. I want to bring to the Council's attention in your packet is a 15-page checklist, basically, going by line items. There is a time on the Saturday morning when we're reviewing the budget for us to go through some individual line items that may not be covered in the more comprehensive policy dis discussions. I, we need to have this back from you with your name on it. Oh. And checked off. <laughs> we would, it's anonymous. <laughs> it doesn't work this time. Back from you with your name on it, the line items you're interested in. Um, back to Mr. McGovern, I believe we said on Monday the 25th, so we can compile these and know a bit of what to expect. There may be some of these line items that we're discussing anyway. If you question it, give me a call or just check it off and we'll get to it. I guarantee that. I look forward to having the Finance Committee work on this. As I've said in my memo to the Finance Committee, what we have presented to us this evening is the manager's budget. Our job is to make this the Council's budget, and that is what we are going to be doing with input from the citizens, and we look forward to that process. Thank you. Do you want to make a motion? I'd be glad to. I would move that. We refer to the Finance Committee the proposed fiscal year 1997 <laughs> municipal budget and follow the workshop schedule tentatively set forward. Second. Council McGinty. Uh, I'd just like to emphasize that although the public hearing is scheduled for May 13th, is that correct? May 13th? May 13th. That the workshops are open to the public and uh, <laughs> we'd appreciate, it, appreciate any input they would like to give us regarding the budget at that time. Councilor Reed. Uh, yes, I would also like the public to know, and I'd like a confirmation with a nod, 
Um, a copy of the budget will be available in the Thomas Memorial Library and at the town hall so that people can come in and peruse. There's a hundred and <coughs> there's a hundred and seventy page document that is available. There's one out here on the counter in the front office is one currently in the library. Uh, this is, is expensive to reproduce. We, we do have a, a shorter summary of it that has all the, <coughs> the same summary numbers in it that we will give copies of free of charge, but if anyone wants a copy of this uh, larger document, we would charge the 20 cent per page rate that we charge for documents. But they are available for inspection. The summary is available free. Thank and you. every counselor has one they can share with you. <laughs> Councilor Jordan. I just want to ask Council McLaughlin, if I don't do my homework and fill out that sheet, I can't ask any other question. I expect right. to have a sheet with your name on it with lots of checks and by Monday the 25th, Councilor George. What if I don't get it there? I'm sure you will. Okay. <laughs> All those in will. favor forwarding this to the Finance Committee. This Herb's going to do Herb, it. Herb, are you going to? Oh, they're not um, going to forward it. Yeah, you don't have to do you it. You don't want to forward it. It's your last, last time. Thank you. 7-0. How, how, how do you want to miss it? I'm thinking what I'm going to do with that before the 25th. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Don't Madam listen. Chair. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Councilor McGinty. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> no? Okay, we'll move on to item 120. To consider approving the annual dog warrant and take any necessary action. I'll refer this to our town clerk. <coughs> Thank Slay. you. Um, I'm rec recommending this evening that the municipal officer sign the annual dog warrant. Basically what it does, it directs the animal control officer to go to delinquent dog owners. Uh, beginning on May 1st, we start the process. There will be a $10 late fee at that time. It is assessed per dog. Um, state law provides that the dog owner has seven days in which to license the dog once he or she has been notified by the animal control officer. At that time, the town may enter a summons and complaint into court for those delinquent dog owners. Um, so at this time, we encourage everyone to come license the dogs. There's a license fee plus a $3 late fee at this time. On and after May 1st, it would be a $10 late fee per dog. Thank you. Move we'll approve. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? 7-0. On to item 121 to consider approving the financial warrants for the period from January 8, 1996 to March 13, 1996 and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, these are the standard warrants. The, the bill that will reform this process landed on the governor's desk. Uh, uh, for some reason, the emergency preamble hadn't been placed on it, so the legislature recalled it from the governor's desk uh, to uh, reenacted as emergency legislation and that's the last I heard. I don't know if it's landed back on the governor's desk or not, but the issue is progressing. Councilor McGindy. I move that the town council approve the financial warrants for the period from January 8th, 1996 to March 13th, 1996. Discussion? All in favor? To 7-0. Now we revert back to item 110. <coughs> to consider the status of land acquisition necessary for the licensing of the refuse disposal area and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern, do you have anything you want to add? Yes, I did want to mention during uh, when the council was deliberating other business, I took a walk through the council chamber and a member of uh, the press who is here, who is employed by Guy Gannett Communications, uh, indicated an objection to the council going into executive session. Uh, I've asked the town attorney in the interim to uh, uh, to look at the statute and to uh, respond to uh, the objection filed uh, by the representative of Guy Gannett Communications. And if you could also tell us why he objected. What was his objection when you're giving us the statute? Oh. Uh, the last question first, Madam Chairman. I don't know, I'm not sure what the objection is. Uh, I think we all like to do the public's business in public. And uh, I can only say that the background of this, and if you look at your minutes uh, that you approved of a while ago from last meeting, you were asked to have me prepare you an order for consideration tonight, and alternatively, a proposal. And I think what the manager and I thought was that you'd wanted to hear from uh, the manager and I on that proposal that's in lieu of the taking. So that's why we, asked, we suggested perhaps you want an executive session. I'm not sure what the objection would be to an executive session. 
uh, you have the right under the uh, main statute to uh, consult with your town attorney on uh, your legal uh, rights and duties in regard to a particular matter. Uh, this is a taking of somebody's property. Uh, it's involuntary. They are not offering it except by their alternative. Um, and I think you'd want to consider that uh, in your rights and duties in regard to that as well as the alternative uh, which they have proposed. Um, both involve, uh, uh, one involves the taking of property, one involves the voluntary exchange of property rights. And uh, I think the uh, process of that and the consideration that they've requested are matters uh, well, would you have a right to consult with me as to your rights and duties? So under the main revised statutes, on specifically for the benefit of whoever has objected, uh, Title I, Section 405, um, the town uh, does have the right to have an executive session. It is up to, the, uh, to consult with the town attorney on their rights and duties. It is up to the town council. Um, you need a, uh, at least a three-fifths vote, so if the seven voting I count that you need at least five out of seven voting affirmatively for an executive session. You can only discuss those matters which you say you're going to discuss in executive session, and no votes or action can be taken in executive session. But you certainly have done those before, and it's really a question of whether your desire to do your business in public is overridden in a specific case with a desire to uh, hear from counsel and get advice before you take a, uh, an extraordinary action. I'm not aware in all the years I've represented this town that you've done, uh, you've taken property by eminent domain. So you have the right to do it, in my opinion, and uh, the motion must state that it is for that specific purpose, which is to discuss legal rights and duties in regard to agenda item 110, and that no further matters will be discussed and no action will be taken in executive session. Thank Glad you. Glad to answer any questions anyone has. Does anyone have any questions of the attorney while he's here in regard to that? No problem. Council McLaughlin. I find in all the years I've been on this council, it's extraordinary that we have that kind of request, that kind of objection tonight, and it's raised by a member of the press and not by a member of the citizenry. I move that the council go into executive session to discuss the legal rights, its legal rights and duties in regard to agenda item 110. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? Councilman Linnell? Yeah, just briefly. I mean, I can see where some people might be a little concerned about that because obviously uh, they uh, would like to see, know, every, know what's going on uh, and know anything. But I, I think we have a responsibility to the town to, to uh, make sure that we're uh, looking after the town's interests. And, and, I, and I think at the same time we, we need to be fair. So uh, I have no problem going to, into an executive session. All those in favor? Is there a discussion? I had a question. You have a question? I, uh, we will be coming back here to record any action that's taken so that the public will be advised and maybe in light of um, the interest in this that maybe the camera crew could stay with a um, description that we're in recess and that we return if that will be suitable. That's the proper way to handle it. That we're in executive session. Yes. Yes. All those in favor going into executive session to discuss item 110 with our attorney. And I, I also want to reiterate that um, this will be the only item that will be discussed, that we'll just be getting information, any final vote and decision we made here in public before all of you. And um, we will move into executive session. Are we going back? Good ball, Roman. The meeting is back in session. I'll repeat for the public that um, no official vote was taken at that meeting. There was a discussion and advice taken from our attorney, and that was the focus of our discussion. Now we'll go back to item 110, which is to consider the status of land acquisition necessary for the licensing of the refuse disposal area. Council McLaughlin. Madam Chairman, I have a motion. 
I move that the town accept a conveyance of a 2.4 acre parcel located easterly of but not adjacent to Spurwink Avenue from Avis and Lee Levitt so as to acquire a 250 foot buffer from the proposed trans transfer station handling site as required by state law by way of a deed indenture by which the town would convey by release deed a 50 foot wide right of way from Spurwink Avenue to the Levitt's property. Upon such terms as set forth in the indenture, together with the payment of up to $2,500 towards the Levitt's legal fees incurred in connection with this matter, the recording costs, including the state of Maine transfer tax, and the reasonable cost of preparing a supplemented mortgage if required by Key Bank of Maine to obtain its joinder in the indenture that the town manager be authorized to execute the indenture and any related documents on behalf of the town to carry out the foregoing. And further, that the town's acceptance of the indenture is expressly conditioned upon the joinder by Key Bank of Maine and any other parties in interest. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Councilor McGinty. I'd just like to say that I intend to support the motion. Um, however, I believe that uh, this indenture is going to lead, lead to significant litigation in the future. Any other comments? Mr. Um, Mr. Leahy, you have all the documents signed by the parties involved? That's correct. Mr. Casaficus, if you come to the microphone and identify yourself, please. Madam Chairman, members of the Town Council, thank you. My name is Jim Casaficus, and I'm the attorney for Avis and Lee Levitt. Uh, you have before you the signed documents. I think the idea here is to forestall litigation, to prevent litigation from occurring. It's our fervent hope that we have worked out an agreement that's workable between the two parties. It's something that Mr. Leahy and I have been working on for the past two weeks, and Mr. McGovern as well. Uh, there's a history to all of this. Uh, there's a long history to this. Uh, we're not going to dwell upon that. We don't wish to do that. We'll forgo the discussion of that. The intent tonight is to move this along and move this forward. And so we would simply ask that this council please approve the deed indenture as it has been agreed to through Mr. Leahy and myself, through Mrs. Levitt and the town, uh, and approve that so that we may move this process forward and allow you to go forward with the transfer station and allow us to, to go forward with the use of the property. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Anyone else want to make a statement? Councilor Reed. Uh, Madam Chairman, I just would like to say that I will also vote to support this, and I thank uh, Council for his clarification, of Council for both parties. Any other comments? All those in favor? The 7 0, none opposed. Councillor McLaughlin. Madam Chairman, I would like to request an item be placed on our April 8th agenda, which is our next Council meeting to consider the taking of the Levitt's property in the event that Key Bank or any other parties in interest do not join in the indenture. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Uh, excuse me. Yeah. I got a question Councilor too. Jordan. Is that a separate item on the agenda? That's on this point. agenda? That's a related item. I don't know if it needs a separate agenda. You don't item think we not. need a separate item on the agenda to Move that forward to the next meeting. I would look to somebody for Robert's rules or to legal counsel. I did not. I was not in the impression we needed a separate item to do that this evening. That it's related to item 110. I, I think uh, Councilor McLaughlin is correct. It, it's, it's in lieu of tabling it. It's simply saying it's uh, put off to next month if the conditions of the indenture aren't satisfied. I think we all hope, and both parties hope, that it'll be satisfied. I have no problem with what the agreement is. If it's a new item on their agenda coming up out of order, I think it requires a, it requires a separate vote. So why doesn't it require an item on the agenda? I think it's a related motion to the uh, agenda item 110, which is the disposition of the uh, uh, property necessary for the refuge center. Should have been added into the first vote then. I think it's I think it's. It can, be, it can be seconded and properly before you because it is related to the first motion and it simply 
uh, having the first motion is condition. If the condition fails, you want it on the next agenda item. Next agenda. Any other comments? Councillor Linnell. Uh, I guess what I'm just wondering is, uh, I mean, if, if for some reason uh, things don't uh, move along with Key Bank, uh, it seems to me that we would then look at, a, at there still may be another one or two options here. I don't, I don't think we're necessarily uh, absolutely looking at a taking next month, although that is a strong, that would be a strong possibility, but we may have, there may be another option. It's, it's signing, just sort of it's caring. Just signing the, the uh, signing the permission to use the land, I think, would be it another is, option. It is, it is the way that um, that was part of, we thought it would be all one motion. We decided it would be too bulky that we'd make it a sub, sub motion. Would we make a further motion then, you mean? No. That the way Councillor McLaughlin presented it was, was the, the consensus of, of the group earlier. Councilman McGinney. I, I think what he's trying to say is that if we don't get the appropriate signatures from Key Bank or any other uh, party in interest, that we would continue whatever negotiations are necessary in, in you know, the, instead of, in, in we, do, we don't want to limit our options to only taking. Do you want, would you ask Councilor McLaughlin if she'd be willing to phrase it as we had it for this agenda saying the status of land acquisition, would you prefer it to read that way? Yeah. We, I just don't want to foreclose negotiations in case for some reason this falls through. We should continue negotiations in whatever form they take, the, the attorneys, and, and then if it ends up that we end up at the takings, then I guess that's what happens, but well, we don't want to foreclose negotiations. That's what I'm trying to say. I can. I believe. If that's uh, the understanding, if that's I think our legal counsel agrees that that would be. Would that be an acceptable <coughs> way of restating the motion? Yes, I think if we want to clarify if anybody's concerned, we should that. Um, motion the to table at the uh, taking of land action. Um, until the next month to determine uh, the key bank uh, condition or the conditions okay. of the motion. Um, and you can direct the uh, town manager and attorney to uh, continue negotiations if that should fail. And I'm sure if that fails, that's the first thing we'll do is see if there's a better alternative. That would be presented to you at the next meeting. So again, you'd have two options at the next meeting. So are you, are you saying that it'd be perfectly acceptable to, instead of talking about the ta phrase takings, to consider the status of land acquisition? That'd be and that gives us the flexibility notice. that other people would prefer? Yes. Okay. Are you willing to amend that motion, Council McLaughlin? Do you want to read an amended motion? A motion. Motion. <laughs> Not emotion. All right. I can withdraw my second and we can start all over. She's just making sure that, that she understands what he was saying. Do you want to say something now? Yeah, Councillor um, Mc McGovern. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to make two comments. One is in response to Councillor Jordan's comment. The, the minutes would reflect that the earlier motion will be 110A, uh, what, whatever action is taken, if there is a motion pro offered, would be reflected on the minutes as 110B. Uh, so there would be two separate votes. That's all I was asking for. Yeah, that's, I'm just responding but to you. Everybody, you all told me I'd voted for that the first time. The, the second point I, that I wish to make uh, is I, I really want to express appreciation to the Levitts for this whole matter. Uh, it, anyone placed in the situation of having a refuse disposal area next to their property and transfer station recycling here is bound to have all sorts of questions and uh, you know if it was my property next door I would certainly want to be sure absolutely that I knew what was going to happen and make sure that my rights were protected and I can really appreciate how awkward this has been for the Levitts and you know it's never easy to be in a position where you know with, with the town as the next door property owner and uh, we've always had a very cooperative relationship with them over the years and while this has been difficult uh, I very much understand the, the Levitt's uh, 
hesitation throughout. Uh, no one really likes to have a property like this next to them. So do want to express appreciation to the Levitts, to uh, Mr. Katsafikis, as well as to the town attorney and uh, Mr. Hill as well. Council McLaughlin. I'd like to withdraw my last motion and try another one. I would request an item be on the April 8th town council agenda to consider the status of land acquisition relative to the Levitt property in the event that Key Bank or any other parties in interest do not join in the indenture. Second. Discussion? All in favor? That's a 7 0. Thank you. It is time for citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to make a statement? Could please come forward and give your name and address, please. I'm Martin Sheehan of 18 Star Road. I've written to this town council two times already, and I think you're somewhat familiar with this case that I'm uh, speaking of. It involves uh, my wife, who worked at the Thomas Memorial Library. She was treated very shabbily by an inexperienced supervisor there. That went on for six months. Her hours were cut, her duties were curtailed. She was treated very poorly. The most disturbing aspect of this, however, is that these events happened with the full knowledge of the town manager. He knew this was happening for the six months. In spite of his regular assurances to my wife, this unacceptable treatment continued unchecked until my wife, Kathy Sheehan, left the library last September. This type of isolated, brazenly hostile treatment of a town employee without cause must surely not be the way this council wants town employees treated. I would like to know what this town council is going to do about it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens wishing to make a comment at this time? Our next item agenda is to consider going into executive session, and once again, it's after 10 o'clock. Um, I know our previous feelings about going into executive session at this hour for considering the manager's evaluation. Shall we um, consider this to be taken up at our Rosemary Reed? Sorry, Madam Chairman, are we going to respond to Mr. Sheen about what the process will be after his comment? What process? In the roof. Do you want me to read it again? No, no. I'm not sure. I believe there was a process that was followed at the time, Mr. McGovern. Didn't you have hearings or sort of a, a review yeah. kind of situation? I'm a little bit reluctant to respond. Uh, the town councils apparently received some letters that I haven't seen copies of. and. Uh, since this involves my evaluation and since under law, uh, you know, it's appropriate for materials to be shared with me, I'm just reluctant to uh, comment. Bill? So where do we go from here? No as is what, you know, what's being indicated? Mm. I'm not sure if this is considered a personnel kind of issue that goes before a personnel appeal board, which is what has happened before. Um, if it hasn't gone that route, I, I would possibly that should be the route it goes. Well, I just figured the gentleman needs an answer. Mm -hmm. That's all I say. That is I would want an answer if I was an issue one way or another. Tell me go down the road or tell me something else. That's the way I look yeah, at it. I, I would like to reiterate. I've, never had a discussion with Mr. Sheehan to my recollection about this matter. And uh, you know, I'm not sure what's being requested. Uh, the person no longer works for the town. Uh, you know, there, there was no was she personnel treated? action. Was she treated fairly? Uh, I, we're not going to debate that. We don't okay. have all the facts. Councilor Linnell. Well, I, I'm, I'm just going to think out loud, uh, I, I suppose. Uh, well, I, I feel a, the gentleman deserves a, some sort of a response, and so um, perhaps we should consider what's appropriate, and and uh, we can consider, uh, we can all be thinking about uh, if it's something that we need to 
uh, refer to our personnel appeals board uh, or some other appropriate uh, review, whether it's a discussion uh, amongst ourselves at some point. Or I, it doesn't come up that often, so I'm, I'm, I'm a, a bit at a, at a loss to, uh, to, to respond, quite frankly. I don't, I, I don't mean uh, not to ignore your uh, concerns, but um, I, I think personally I've got to chew on it a little bit, and uh, just to be fair to everyone involved. John? Um, two, two points. First of all, I think it's inappropriate for the town council to discuss personnel matters, whether it's pr about the town manager or it's about Mr. Sheehan's wife in public. Um, I think that's best handled through the appropriate um, avenue, whatever that is. Second of all, um, I have received the letters from uh, Mr. Sheehan and his wife, um, and I think to, uh, the initiation of action needs to come from Mrs. Sheehan um, through whatever appropriate channels there are uh, in the town, um, through state, uh, uh, if she believes she was discriminated against something, through whatever state agency handles that, um, and that it's, it's their initiative to um, take action, not for the, for the town council to tell him or uh, recommend for him to take some particular action. No, I agree that there is there are set processes that usually are followed, um, and I guess that would be probably if that avenue hasn't been investigated. That's probably what should be followed. I guess that's the best way we can can describe that all the all the avenues have been covered. Seems to be sort of the consensus of the of the council, just off the hip, so to speak. Thank you. Bill. No, I just want to say, so the way I understand it from Council McGinney is that uh, looks like it's down the road of the attorneys. And uh, so shouldn't the council uh, at some meeting discuss the issue and give the gentleman an answer or one way or the other? That's my only point. No, I think John was right in saying that the, the source that the point of initiation comes with the aggrieved party and we do have a personnel grievance board is that correct but I'm, yeah I've been you know I got a call from the chairman late this late this afternoon I think indicating that that a letter had been received uh, I with many other meetings haven't had a chance to research what the procedure is but I'm not too sure what what who the aggrieved party is here first of all and second, what the standing is of the aggrieved party, whether or not the, the aggrieved party still has any standing as far as any local uh, personnel issue, personnel process. And that would take, uh, you know, if, if it was so desired, and, you know, that would take review by the town's labor legal counsel. But again, not having seen any material, I have no idea uh, what, what we're being asked to respond to. So there again, it was, we need to know exactly what. Is that what you're saying? Before we know well, which way I to think, go? I think what I'm responding is you're looking for answers as to what process is to be followed. But I'm not, I haven't read any of the material to, to send it to anyone that can give any legal advice as to what is the appropriate procedure. And, you know, without, without the benefit of that material and without the benefit of uh, review by the the town's council uh, with an E, not with an I. Uh, I can't respond. Council Bill, or now? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I, I just want to say that I think it probably uh, it's, it behooves the council to to look into it and, and see whatever uh, appropriate uh, uh, channels that should follow. I mean, obviously, the it's it's a very awkward. Uh, because uh, the ma where uh, the manager is uh, in the middle of this, and and uh, and he ultimately reports to the council. So I think we will we'll uh, see if there's an appropriate channels to follow, and and uh, and go from there. I guess that's all we can do. That's why I came here. Well, thank you. I mean, if there was a situation going on six months, it was every time she talked to Mr. McGovern, oh, everything's going to get better, and it did. Who do I talk to? Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Well, I think we now need to determine the standing of the of the person and whatever materials need to be available, uh, because I think we're getting there. Uh, there are processes, and we've got to make sure that we follow them, and that's right. the only way we can do and, it. Yeah. And it may be simply that we uh, uh, refer it to our personnel appeals. Uh, no, well, we'll. We'll, we'll we need to, some we'll further have to look into it. Work that's all. This, like, yeah. That's all we, we can we do. Need, we need to talk to some professional people to find out which avenue is the appropriate one. Yeah, that's great. I, I'd like to, apparently the, the allegations or whatever they are, are directed at me, and I, I just want to inform the council that I want to reserve my right to participate in any executive session that you may have on this matter if, the, if, the, if in fact, the letters you receive are, in fact, allegations that I have done something inappropriate or whatever under these uh, personnel uh, executive session rules. If you do have any discussion in executive session about my performance, uh, I'm entitled to fully participate in those sessions. And That's right. on this particular issue, I would like to exercise that right. Mrs. Chairman? Yes, Councilor Chapel. I, I think of this whole conversation from the start when Mr. Sheehan had his chance for uh, talking to us is very inappropriate for a council meeting and for councilors to be discussing any pros and cons about it. I know how I would feel if my wife had been in any kind of an alt, uh, d difficulty in her job or anywhere else, I would be very supportive and I admire him for it. I don't want him to think that I'm putting this at him that I say he shouldn't have spoken. I think you should have. Then it should have stopped there. I don't like these questions back and forth or these ideas back and forth. Then it's up to the council to see that the manager looks into this fully and makes a report back to the council at a workshop or whenever we get together and then we can go on from there. If the policy isn't right, we rewrite it and change it. If the policy is right, we stick with it. I, can't, I think this is very inappropriate. I agree. So I, I, therefore, I think we move on to item 122. Just, just a minute. I want to, I want to agree with Irv 100%. And the only reason I brought it up, moment it up, is to find out and give the guy an answer where we were going. Yeah. What road was we heading? Are we going to do something or are we, we aren't going to do anything? But I think whatever it pointed out is an ideal way of doing it, and I think it's fair, and I think the man deserves an answer. That we'll look into it. I just, I, I know you want to close this off, but I, I would like to say one more thing. I, I think it's important that if, if this is looked into as to what's the town's responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis this issue that I recuse myself uh, from discussing it with our legal counsel and that the town council chairman do that on behalf of the council since uh, it would appear that the allegations, although I haven't seen anything, might be really against me at this point. So I, I, I will recuse important. myself from any participation as to look I at I think it's very important, Mr. Chairman, that you take it back and everybody that's listening tonight or hears it tonight knows that if a party in town, a taxpayer, a citizen, has a complaint, it should be heard. And then it's up to us to see that there is something done about it and it's not brushed under the rug. And I want to assure anybody that I'm talking to that we will not brush it under the rug, that there will be a report back to us and we'll discuss it and we'll come right out point blank. This is the policy and if it's voted on and accepted, you've got to accept that. Either that or vote us out. Very good. We're not going to hang him in the square. I don't care because I'm all done. Are we... Are we with this item so we can go on to item 122 and get a consensus for the council on the evaluation of the manager is that your motion yes. council it's mine in light of the hour and only for that reason yeah. only for that reason it seems to be we um, I think we should start his evaluation some evening at 630 instead of putting it all, all fresh um, so there's a motion. It's a second. Rosemary, you seconded. Discussion. Janet? The council's well aware that I'm going to be away for four weeks starting April 7th. I'd like to know when you plan to schedule this for. I would fully like to participate. I think we've put this off long enough. I'm, you know, I'm it very, up. very sorry that it hasn't happened yet. It's through no fault of the managers at all. It's Council. It's not his fault. It's just we've had a lot to do. I need to know. What um, be do we have a set item agenda yet for March 25th? No. I'm going to take it up first. I think we'll take that up first for the evening, and then we can go into workshop. Any other 
items that we care to discuss that evening. Thank Is that you. satisfactory? Thank All those you. in favor? Okay, I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? To 7 0. Are you starting that meeting at 6 30, did you say? I was. Uh, or kidding. I was kidding, but perhaps we will start at 7. Oh, five. That would help. <laughs> Want to see the news? <laughs> oh, all right.